What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today we're going to be checking out a little game that just released on Steam called Avon Colony. Uh, the game's been out in early access for a little while, but I hadn't really had a chance to cover it because, I don't know, sometimes I get like early access fatigue. You ever get the same thing? Like, this is what I do for a living here on the channel, is I play indie games, I show them off to you guys so that you know that they exist, so that you can decide if they're a thing that you like or do not like. That is my MO, that is what I do. But sometimes I just get early access fatigue, you know? Like, there's so many early access games, and I'm so tired of getting excited about early access games, getting burned and just being like, ugh. So I decided with this one, I was going to wait until the final release. So let's check out Avon Colony. I have no idea what I'm doing. All of these people are probably going to die horribly in the cold confines of space. But you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that I want to play in sandbox mode for right now. So that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna start with some resources, environmental events. They can be on, I don't know, occasional, rare, whatever, it doesn't really matter to me. You need something to shake things up every now and again. I have no idea really what I'm doing aside from that. I've played the tutorial, I've like a rough idea how to play the game. But let's jump on in and play some Avon Colony. So we are on Vanar. Apparently there's some kind of wheeled alien over there. Nope, that's just a robot. Uh, build the colony as you see damn fit. You're damn right I will. I'll build this thing however I want. I'm the dude. Like the let's see here. Population. You may build your colony however you see fit. We will offer you mission objectives for population growth and expedition accommodations, but you will not receive any other mission objectives. Okay. I'm alright with that. So let's go ahead and pause the game on up real quick. And I want to see what we have. Pause. There we go. I think I can also do it with the 1, 2, 3, and 4 keys. Uh, we have a solar module. A solar module. Our power grid can be seen down here. We've got another solar module right there. These are storage modules, apparently. Uh, storage modules are going to allow us to store things, would be my best guess. We've got an oxygen regulation module. Okay, gives you better air quality and makes things a tad better, and air quality is right there. All right, and then we've got a construction drone hub that has five workers, uh, no unhappy workers. How do we tell where our population is at right now? I assume we have a population of 16 at the moment, and they all seem to be reasonably happy. That's good. I don't deal with unhappiness well. I get a little upset. Uh, I will probably recycle that so that I can build more stuff. Yeah, go ahead, and you'll see that our little drone will go over here, and he'll take care of it for us. Why do manual labor when you can just have robots do it for you, man? It's all about the robots. I think that our first thing we should probably do is create some kind of turbine or power. Now, we've got a tier 2 solar panel right there, which would be pretty good. Uh, we've also got, can use it to fan mode with a pot oh, okay, apparently there's toxic gases we have to worry about. I'm not going to put that in right now, and in fact, I don't really like the layout of this right now. It's disorganized. It's disorganized and it upsets me. Let's go ahead and, I'm actually going to rearrange things real fast before we get started. So because everything is disorganized, really what I'm going to try and do now is I'm going to move solar panels over to this side, and I'm going to recycle the ones that we have over here so that it's all taken care of, so that all of our solar is on one side and, like, everything we need is in other areas. As far as mining goes, I don't see anything around here. We've got some kind of weird, nasty black lake over there. We've got a cargo pod. I will definitely pick that up, absolutely. It looks like it's got some free food, some nanites, and some corn inside of it. Get the corn out of my face! And so we'll pick that up right now. And we've got a copper deposit over here. It's got 2,000 copper. Let's look around for some lumpy stuff while we wait for all these things to happen because it is going to take some time. Uh, so we got a couple of solar panels right there. I am going to recycle this one then, I think. This structure cannot be recycled until your colony is generating 200 total electricity so apparently this is part of like a central thing that cannot be deconstructed i don't like that at all i actually would rather just start like in planet base with nothing because it's disorganized like you've got solar panels all over the place you've got storage all over the place for me personally i would want like four storages right here four panels right here and then just open building space in this direction i don't like it when it's like that uh, we've got an iron deposit on this side if we can get a mine taken care of i think that's probably a decent place so we can make little tunnels that go all over the place like so and these glass tunnels will actually take us to different areas of the base because apparently as it said in the tutorial i'm not really 100 percent sure about this but we're in a low oxygen environment or something like that humans can't go outside for whatever reason i don't know if there's like diseases or all kinds of other weird stuff going on but we aren't allowed outside i'm gonna speed up the game ever so slightly so that that gets done right there and then we are gonna track down we need mining and processing oh we've got a tier one mine right here 
I'm going to suggest we drop that in right there so that we start to generate a little bit of iron and we can convert that into nanites. In addition, we can also assign people to work on this little lump of poopy copper, whatever it is, poopy copper, iron, bark, whatever the hell you want to call it. I don't know. It's a big old dinosaur looking lump thing and now we've drilled like an anus into it. And so we can actually take this and we can say to fill it. Uh, if we want to, and that'll send more workers over, or we can say it's just normal priority, and so people will come over here and do their thing on this side. Now, the next thing we had to do after that is we needed to make a nanite processor. We lack the power that's necessary to do that. Nanites are going to be one of the number one things you need in order to get, like, stuff done. They're listed right here. Can't build things without nanites. Things, you know, like water purifiers and whatnot. So my assumption is that we definitely want that. So let's get to work on making that happen. So from this little side tunnel right here, I think we're just about maxed out on our power. That means that what I'd like to do is we could go with a geothermal generator. That's definitely something that we do. Generates up to 200 power, but that would fix a lot of our problems nice and splickety early. Uh, what else do we have? We have residential structures. Those require power, and they will allow people to move in a comfortable residential space that supports more colonists than an outpost. I will strongly consider that, but unfortunately the first thing we need is more power. I'm going to put in a wind turbine right here. We're just going to call this, actually no, let's not do that. Let's cancel that out right there. If I can, uh, I could recycle that one and move it over to here, but I don't know if I will. Let's stick with solar on this side for right now. There we go. We'll put in a couple of solar generators. That is going to cost us some nanites, but I think we'll glide through it okay. At the end of the day, I think we'll be alright. And so there it goes. Yay! It looks like he's spray painting structures right now. He's just like graffitiing me useful stuff. Imagine how awesome the world would be if you could just do that. You just had a robot and you were like, Robot, construct for me an Xbox! And the robot was like, Cool, constructing for you an Xbox. And then it just like does that as long as you like feed it enough sand or like bird poop or whatever it is that the drone uses as its fuel source. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to imagine what things would cause that to happen and I don't know. I'm, I'm not a scientist. I don't know what it requires. Let's slow the game down for a moment. I'm thinking a residential structure is probably a good idea. Other things that we could be looking into as well as we could start looking into farms. Uh, there is like a fertility ranking on the ground around here. And you do want it to not be surrounded by stuff. So let's say that we put it like right here. And then we connect it via a pipe right there. Let's just see what happens. I don't know. This is my first impression. So... Hopefully having a farm will help us even out our food supply. We can have it, like, grow some stuff. Farming structures, aside from that, we have a greenhouse. So at 50% efficiency in winter. Well, it's not winter right now, so I'm going to assume we're going to be all right. We built ourselves a little farm over here. It's got its own water supply. Bim, bam, bomb. Very nice. It has no power. Power is carried through these little glass bridges right here, in case you were wondering about that. Uh, we can now produce something in here. Uh, we could produce broccoli, we could produce corn, we could produce melons. Okay, farms will not grow crops, greenhouses will grow at 50% rate, and all solar structures will generate 50% power. So winter is coming. Is there any type of meter around here somewhere that tells me when winter is coming? Like, do we have like a little wheel or anything that's like, winter is here, you are here. It looks like melons are the most productive here, so I'm just going to put them on melons. It's it's melon time. Uh, the other thing that apparently we need is we need more power. Otherwise, in winter, when everything's running at 50%, it's not going to be good. So we'll take two of these, and we'll drop them in over here. We're almost at the point where we can get the Nanite Forge and get that moving. Uh, it looks like we're growing watermelons or something on that side. What is, what is looming overhead? Is there, like, some giant independent-style death day huge thing happening i don't know either way, i was just making sure that there wasn't some giant ships shaped like a wafer levitating over the top of my colony getting ready to blast us all into oblivion because this is sci-fi after all it's only a matter of time before something goes ridiculously wrong and that's what's occurring uh we'll have these two over here that should give us enough power to last a little while i have built a lot of solar generators though so when they go down to 50%, we'll have to wait and see what happens. As far as processing is concerned, we can make a nanite processor right there. How's our unemployment looking? Unhappy colonists. Unemployment is 0%, so we actually need more people to live here. In order to get more people to live here, I'm going to say we should build an outpost, like right over on this side sounds all right to me. Now, the little green lines you're seeing are logistical chains. That's where they're going to try and get their food from if they can. 
I'll probably build it right there. Yeah, that seems all right to me. Oh, we can also press C and look at security cameras, and you can see, like, our our little people walking around. So we got Nadia Silva right there, Dana Fisher. I don't see any dudes around. Apparently, we're lacking in dudes. But anywhere that you have, like, a tunnel thing, that's where there's a camera installed, and you can just cycle through them with the C key. Kind of an interesting feature. Not, like, a terrible feature. Seems pretty awesome. Uh, we've got pretty good growth going on in here. Oh, apparently it's winter. Okay. I just was have to ride this one out. That did get our food into the positives, though, which was pretty sweet. Food quality is marginal. No, we're freezing around the edges. So cold. So cold. Well, it looks like we're having a uh, white Christmas over here. Although I don't even know what time. I've always thought about that. Like, how hard would it to be... So to cross, like, reference time across different planets and different systems and stuff like that, like, how tough would that be? That would be a pain in the ass, right? Like, you would have to have everything synced up to, like, a central clock, and then everywhere else would have, like, their own local times, but the central clock would be the one that, like, all government documents and unified things would be in. And then, at that point, you could then, at any time, you would have another computer that links the times together. And so you could reference the time on different planets based on the central computers or the central clock's time. Still, that would be like a mess. That would require a lot of cross-referencing and checking on things. Uh, there goes our power grid right there. I just dropped in another turbine. Hopefully that'll help out a little bit. But it looks like we do need to diversify our power if we're going to last through this whole thing. That got us to 47. Luckily, the entire base doesn't go down when you run out of power. All that's going to happen is that, unfortunately, it will power down whatever is, like, most remote from that other area. A life support module. Okay, our O2 quality still seems to be okay, so we don't need to mess around with any O2 modules at the moment. Uh, the thing that I am watching is actually the prevalence of water. Water is a little bit low, and so we can actually make a water pump in here. And I think that's going to be listed under the little water droplet right there. It requires five power to get done, though. And so we do have a little bit of wind power around, supplying six electricity, unfortunately, for right now. Not entirely working altogether that great, but they've got us back up into the positive. We've diversified our power grid a little bit, and hopefully nothing bad happens over here. You know, meteor strikes, laser attacks, uh, giant dinosaur feeding frenzies, um, flying whale sharks, space nukes, that kind of stuff. So it appears as though I was asking earlier how we tell when it's winter. It does look like it keeps it down here, actually, in the little time meter. I've got things sped up at the moment because there's not really anything we can actively do until, A, we get more colonists, and, B, we're all out of workers right now. Like, we don't have anybody to work on the it's things that need to be worked on. Election. Oh, shit! It's a referendum. Citizens cast their ballots at the end of the winter season. You can receive polling updates. Okay, so apparently they get to vote about whether I get to keep playing or not. Not sure how I feel about that system. Might be a little selfish. You're like, I really want to play the game today. And they're like, ah, no, the delegation has voted nay. You don't get to play today. Go play RimWorld. Yep, piss off. Go away. Uh, you must maintain a majority to keep your governorship. So morale's pretty good. In general, people seem to be pretty happy. As I'm sure it'll call, be okay. How are my stats right now? So colonists want a short commute along tunnels between home and work. They dislike walking through non-tunnel buildings. Oh, well, that was probably a mistake then because I put their house right in the middle of non-tunnel buildings. So, you know, uh, low water. Yeah, we should probably get on that, too. Let's go ahead and we'll find a water pump in here that we can drop somewhere to make our lives a little bit easier. A uh, water pump could probably go... It seems like there's varying areas that you want to put these in. That one seems all right, though. We'll go ahead and drop that in to make sure that everybody's supplied. We're running a little low on nanites right now, and I'm waiting to see when immigration's going to come through so that I get some new people. That way we can put up some new buildings, because right now we have no workers. There we go. Now that that's built, we appear to be generating water at a rate. Whether or not that's a good rate, I don't know. What I should do is I should disconnect the mining until... Uh, We'll make it low priority. I'll disconnect the mining until we've actually got ourselves in a situation where our water supply will even on out. Because we're at one point, or minus 1.6, 9.5 per colonist. Yeah, we should probably drop in a few more places that they can get water from. But as of right now, we're running a little bit low on resources. Uh, we could get away with a water pump out there, but that's kind of far. I mean, this one right here still produces, so I see no reason why we wouldn't. It does look to me like our water is going up, whether or not that's going to be. So what is this producing? Plus 12.6. Pump to 22 per column. Avoid falling. 
Yeah, go ahead and uh, pump as hard as you need to to make sure everybody has as much water as they want for their rations. Uh, we went into a water crisis right there, and I don't want to be the guy responsible for thirsting our entire colony to death. If you become known as the Thirster, that's kind of a messed up title, man. It's kind of a messed up title. You don't want to be the Thirster, like the guy that's responsible for like thirsting out your own colony. Looks like we're good, though. I mean, it's no longer red, and it looks like that number is slowly easing over. And because we're producing melons, we've got more than enough food, so... Nice. Cool. It looks like we're on track to, I guess, win the referendum. Hooray for us. Uh, we were unable to find any colonists with any substantial complaints. Well, there was that one guy that said that you keep pooping in the urinal. But that's my right as governor. It is my right. So if we wanted to get more people, I need a trade. Ooh, I need an immigration hub. Um, I need to bring this over to here. Or perhaps over to, like, another spot. Doesn't really matter much to me. Doesn't really matter. Anyone can see. And that does not leave us with a lot of nanites. But we need more workers and we need more people. So I'll recycle something if I really have to. But as it stands right now, pretty much everything is positive. We're not losing water very quickly. Water is looking solid. I'm happy with the way our water is coming through. This place is pumping... Well, they're both using five. They're basically getting it done. I'm kind of wondering what the efficiency difference is between using tier two, like going straight from the beginning and spending extra resources on tier two stuff versus going from the beginning, building tier one stuff, recycling it, then building something up that's better later. Obviously, I can recycle some of this stuff if I really need to to get the nanite fab up. The nanite fab that we have right here requires... Uh, our nanite fab takes 14, so we can't build anything else after this. Like, we have to have, essentially, nanites coming in. And so I will drop a nanite fab in. It should probably be down here with the rest of the mining equipment, right? That seems... That seems intelligent to me. So we'll go ahead and do that. We have three nanites left. Ain't no new buildings coming in. Uh, we got a couple of people here, and we've got drop ships that are coming with five new colonists per drop. Uh, as of right now, we've got 15 out of 16 inhabitants inside of there, one out of 16 inside the life support module. And so we will want to get these things done. Luckily, most of our buildings that are running production right now do not have a full... Yeah, 76% of the vote. That's a hell of a vote. That's a, like... Yeah, that's, like, blown out of the water vote, dude. If somebody takes 76% of the vote in anything, that's a pretty solid campaign that you've just run. So the drop ship should be... Oh, it's unloading right now. Good. So there's a little spaceship right there. That's pretty badass. Avon Colony! That's pretty sweet, dude. I like what's going on right now. I'm thinking this is going to be a pretty sweet game. I'm looking forward to doing future episodes. I really sincerely am. I think it's going to be pretty rad. Now, as we expand, we'll want to be careful. We're generating 0.2 nanites per minute or something. I don't know. Synthesizing one nanite over and over and over again. We have 132 iron in storage. So technically, I don't really need people inside the mine doing anything right now. As soon as these people unload... Uh, winter is coming. Our scanners have indicated that a power failure is likely in winter unless you take steps. Farms will not grow crops. Okay, that's fine. I don't really care about any of that. That's all good. I should, yeah, if I can shut down the farm, I mean, we'll just shut it down. Oh, we can't deactivate it while the zone has sufficient power. That's odd. I guess we can pick. I guess you have to have a power shortage before you can power things down manually. That's kind of a strange choice. Uh, I'm not sure why that was. Maybe it has to do with some internal system or something like that. Either way, I really want to utilize this steam geyser then bulldoze this entire power grid over here. That's right. I'm the kind of leader that'll link our success to one device that if anything goes wrong with it, we all die. Because that's just the kind of leader that I am. That's just the sort of dude that I choose to be. Uh, jobs fill 42%. We absolutely need a few more colonists. I cannot be deactivated. I think that ship goes out and gets more people, but we'll have to wait and find out, I think. Now, winter has arrived, and so what I'm thinking we're going to do is basically everything that's ancillary that doesn't, like, really matter. And so when the power goes down, what we're going to do is we are going to deactivate the mine. Uh, we are going to deactivate the farm, because that doesn't function at all anyways. Uh, the complaints that we're getting from our people right now at the end of our referendum is that people have to walk too far to get to their jobs. They want to have a place where they can have some fun, and they want to get some shopping centers. So I guess it's mostly, like, commodity-related. Uh, other things that can be turned down for right now is we can deactivate that. Uh, we can deactivate the water pumps because we have plenty of water to make it through winter, so I don't see any reason 
why we shouldn't be able to make that happen. That'll get us down to 49 out of 50, which is a nice equilibrium that I'd prefer to be at. And other than that, I kind of like this game. You know, it's a, it's a simple little game. It doesn't have, like, the depth of Tropico or, like, Planet Base. But at the same time, it's a fun little title, and it's pretty to look at. Although, if it's just me, everything looks a little fuzzy to me. I have everything on maximum right now in the graphics, and it looks a little fuzzy to me for whatever reason. Uh, this game's called Avon Colin. If you liked the playthrough, you should definitely check that out. Uh, it's down below. You can purchase the game for yourself. I will come back with another episode. Well, once we've gotten some new colonists, and we've gotten some of these random things out of the way. Ooh, what's up here? Yeah, buddy. We've got a, uh, we got a ship coming in real fast. Let's see what's going on with him. What's up with my ship here? What's going on with my ship? Anybody wanna, anybody wanna jump on in here? Information? Ooh, yeah, we've got colonists. It's unloading right now. Hopefully, ooh, there's 21 people now. Nice, very cool. And so I think like nine people come, but like they choose who's gonna stay. We got like four or something like that. That's good because we definitely have a worker deficit. So having a few more workers is not going to make shit suck at all, dude. They are burning through nanites now. That's really good because we weren't able to build anything on the back end of this episode because of our nanite deficit. I will see you all next time. My name is Splattercat. I show off indie games every single day. This game is called Avon Colony. It is an indie game. Therefore, I have shown it off. Hi, dude!